Charlie would play uh, as a starter all the time on a lot of clubs in the Big Eight, but with the, the depth in backs that uh, Coach Knight has, uh, Shane's just starting to work into a little more playing time, but he's going to be a good one. In talking with Coach Knight earlier today, John, he told us both, I think, that the thing he wanted to do was jump out in front early and put a couple of touchdowns on the board trying to discourage North. Boy, that's the best way to do with any club. And, of course, the Lord Orange Club, which is young, they're still working. They, they are making big strides towards coming back. Um, but that would put them in a hole early, both uh, uh, physically on the scoreboard and emotionally. Yeah, it gets harder and harder if you fall down a couple touchdowns to a team that is supposed to beat you. You tend to get a little bit discouraged uh, mentally and emotionally, and that can oftentimes lead to more physical mistakes. Well, with kids this age, that's for sure, Joe. One thing I think we want to watch for, and uh, maybe we'll get it in in a minute right after the kickoff. I'm going to share something with you. And Bobby Top will screw it down again, and the Knights will fall on it. I believe that's a duel down there. But maybe Larry Hopkins, number 10, who fell on that football. So the last two games, Lord Orch has opened up with a long pass, and they've connected on them both times. It may be something to watch for right here as they uh, open up their first offensive scrimmage. Their quarterback is a junior, 5'6", 140-pounder, Ryan O'Toole, Eric Miles, one running back. Kiko Duckett, perhaps the best runner in the Big 8, is number 22, and he's also in there, and the wing back is Jay Penn. And we've got a whistle early. Had a little movement on both sides, Joe, but I think... Uh, the Port Central people did not go off sides, and then there was a jump with a guard position down there at uh, Lauren Orange. And he was drawn off. That'll be a five-yard penalty on the night. It'll back them up inside their own 40-yard line. Other starters for Norwich, James Rawlings is a split end. Ascari Mitchell, a tackle. Zeke Jones, Scott Banner, Virgil Tabor, Rob Carr, and Derek Pennington, the tight end on the right side. Mustangs going with Roars, Munson, Hinklin, Roberts, and Kenerva up front. Linebackers are Buller, Roush, Eaton, and Kalinsky, the defensive back. And the give goes inside to Duckett, and he goes nowhere. Big hit. That's the kind of thing that the Mustangs need early, I think, on uh, someone like Duckett. Um, kind of make him think a little bit about where he's going to run and everything, rather than just get that, uh, that consistently 9-7 speed uh, up to full still. Duckett, 300 yards coming into tonight's game on only 40 carries. That average is up to 7.7 yards a crack. Second and 14. They gave Duckett a yard after that five-yard penalty. And Ryan will roll to his right and look downfield. He's hit as he throws, and it's over the head of his intended receiver. So I think that's one thing that we're going to see a little bit is, is more of the pass from Lord Arch. They don't want to be just a, a, a running offense, just a Tico Duckett offense. That's a, they're going to use Miles a lot, who is also an excellent back, and they'd like to throw the ball some and loosen it up. Rawlings was the intended receiver out on the right side of the field. Norris runs uh, an offshoot of the old wing tee, which um, a lot of clubs don't run anymore. Well, you don't see that quite as, uh, or anywhere near as often as you used to. I think maybe they use that, uh, that up back a little bit in the uh, passing scheme. And the ball this time underthrown again. Or what we'd call a slot back, I guess. They split out that wide receiver, and then they put a back right in the slot next to the tackle, so they still have the two backs, like a pro set or a lot of other sets, and then they, they mix their plays off of that. They're not mixing them too well, however, as it'll be fourth and 15, and they'll have to give up the football. In the front is Andrew Cups. He kicked off to start the ball game, and I think we've got a timeout on the night. Indeed we do. I'm not sure if we didn't have enough numbers on the field. That would be a costly uh, timeout. Well, to spend one at, at uh, this time of the game for something like that sure will be, Joe. Uh, the, some of the Knights are waving over on the side, and yes, we've got another ball player coming in. So, Portage Central is just joining us at the opening kickoff. Went 80 yards, scoring on a 14-yard touchdown gallop around the left side by Shane Springman. The extra point was good, and our score with five minutes to play here in the first quarter. Portage Central 7, Lloyd Norris nothing. There you see it. The field looks a little better, Joe, too, tonight than last week. Oh, it looks a heck of a lot better, actually, than last week when it was raining through most of the ball game. Uh, they've done a nice job of uh, making sure that uh, they got all of the 
that all the drainage that they could and everything's cleared off and it I, I really I think it looks real good. I don't think that's gonna be a, any problem at all tonight. All of a sudden on the field uh, before the game started, it's firm in the middle, but uh, when you get around to the sideline it gets soggy in a big hurry and the punt is away and fairly good kick, it'll bounce on the thirty. That Matt cop up, he'll take it and come to the sideline before Nick Sarles will wrap him up. Picked up a few yards. Also in on the stop is Buey, number 33, the strong safety for the Knights. You always want your uh, your deep men to field the ball if it's safe to field the ball. And Matt Cop let it bounce once and gave it that nice high bounce where he could pick it up, where it's not going to roll any farther, and in fact he gained two or three yards to get it back. And Cop will remain a quarterback. I'm looking for Dan Knight on the sideline to see if perhaps he's left the, uh, the field, but I don't see him. First and ten, Portage Central on their own 26. And the give will go left side. There was Steve Pewitt, and there just wasn't much room to run on that one, Joe. Tim McPherson, number 94, he's on the stop. He's the junior, a 200-pounder. Second nine. Dan Knight is on the sidelines talking to Coach Knight, so uh, he looks healthy at any rate. He took a hit on the first drive. As the Mustangs will go double tight, and Martin is the wideout. He will now come back into your picture. There he is. And the pitch will go to the sideline. Kirk Johnson has it. He's across the 40, down the sideline to the 40, and driven out of bounds at about the 42. A pickup of uh, 14 for Kurt Johnson. Well, he stayed right down that sideline. Tip throwed right down that sideline. Uh, Kurt made an excellent cut on that after he got around because he did take a hit just before the cut, kept his balance, and, and moved up for another four or five yards. Johnson running hard. He's a junior, 6'2", 180 pounds. Hewitt checks out for the Mustangs. And Springman back in the ball game. First and 10, ball in the 41. Nick Saros making that last tackle for the Knights. Top will send Martin in motion to the top of your picture left and come back inside to Springman. He makes a nice move, and he's got himself a first down across the 50 to the 48. Coach Knight was talking earlier this week, Joe, that uh, um, both Danny Knight and Matt Cobb are throwing the ball real well. He's real comfortable using either one of those athletes at, uh, at the quarterback position, and maybe Danny was shook up just enough, and Matt's moving the ball club now, so he's going to use it. Danny Miles in on the stop. Springman will come out as Porter Central shuttles running backs in and out. Chris Norman, the tight end on the right side. You see him number 80 in your picture, and Martin again will come motion left. Back to pass goes Metcalf throwing the long ball down the sideline to Martin, and it's intercepted down there. That was an excellent play by Ryan O'Toole. If uh, you watched on your monitor, you could see that uh, um, the Lauren Orch is playing an absolute man-to-man. When Martin went in motion, O'Toole had to run the full length of the field, across the field, that is, to pick his man up and then go down the field with him, turning just at the right time to make that interception. Excellent play. The ball perhaps a little bit underthrown as O'Toole had inside position. Martin might have had a step on him. But the sophomore, junior rather, stayed with it for Norix. First and ten for Norix, deep inside their own territory, and again they try and go right side. Ball carrier, I believe, is Miles as the Empire will check it out for you. Mark Brewer is in on the stop for the Mustangs, second and ten. No yardage that time for Norwich. Never like to see turnovers, Joe, but that's uh, that's as good as a punt when you're looking at it from that angle, and they've they've got the Mustang uh, the Knights down in in a hole. Second and ten, two eleven to play here in the first quarter, and Duck at this time will get around the corner, but get driven out of bounds, only picking up a few. Norman. A linebacker over there knocking him out. Well, you can see that quick step by Kiko Duckett, though, that he made that first move around the uh, defensive end to get outside and gain those four yards. Kiko Duckett is extremely quick. He'll run a 9-700 consistently, and he is also a load at 185 pounds. Well, he sure is, Joe. Third and five now for Norwich. They have yet to make a first down in this ball game. See the wing T. And Doug Roberts is all over O'Toole. 
Joe, they showed a little blitz. It looked like a little blitz. They pulled out of it, and I'm wondering if uh, that tackle on the side that's on Doug Roberts was a little nervous about that linebacker coming in, and maybe just whether he just looked that way or whether he leaned that way, but it gave the open alley for Doug Roberts to come right in there and shut that off. I'd be nervous if Doug Roberts was sitting over me, too. Yeah, you wouldn't need a <laughs> linebacker <laughs> candidate you when you got a guy like that. The rule, of course, is over onside linebacker, but uh, Eric Smith, a blocking assignment, and they're forced to punt again. And Cop will take this one on the fly. And turn and give it to Pewitt, and they've got an excellent punt return. Pewitt now making a cut to the inside. He's across the 20 to the 18. Boy, and what a block by Doug Roberts. He caught that first block in that wall, and he drove the uh, young man from Lori Norris right out of bounds, Joe. Hoskins had to make the uh, saving tackle. So Ford Central will start in excellent field position on the 18. With a chance to deliver the knockout punch early. Boy, this exchange of the ball has uh, added about uh, 25, 30 yards to uh, Forty Central's uh, position on the field. Yeah, they fielded it on the 40, and they're down inside the 20-yard uh, line. First and 10 on the 18. Top the quarterback on the option, keeps it, breaks one tackle, dives down close to the 10. Nick Forrest making a stop for the night. Another nice read by Matt Top. He put the ball in there to the, the running back. It was closed up there. The tackle was down there, so he pulled the ball out, turned it upfield, and, and made that good yardage, almost eight yards. It'll be third and three, or second and three, rather, for Portage Central. Stop now is 17 yards on three carries. 35 seconds to play in the first quarter. The Mustangs up seven to nothing. Ball goes inside to Johnson, and he barrels his way down close to the five. What? Johnson's got that good body lane. He's right in there when he makes that first hit. He just keeps right on going and gains that extra two yards, Joe. Rob Carr, the middle linebacker, had to make the hit. First and goal for the Mustangs on, uh, help me out here, John, about the six? It looks like just about the six or maybe a long six, Joe, but it's, it's inside the ten quite a ways, and all they have to do now is punch it in. They'll send Martin again in motion, left side. And a bubble, but Cock picks it up and goes straight ahead. Down inside the five, and that's the last play of the first quarter. You're going to fumble the ball. That's the way they do it, I guess. Matt picked it right up, and of course, uh, very wisely, just scooted right ahead rather than trying to do anything with the uh, uh, football or anything with the normal play that they're going to have on. I notice Norick still is in that man-to-man -man defense. When Terry Martin went into uh, his motion, O'Toole went all the way across the field with him. Our score at the end of the first quarter, Portage Central 7. Lloyd Norris nothing. The Mustangs took the opening kickoff, went 80 yards for the score, scoring on a 14-yard touchdown scamper by Shane Springman. And Portage Central again knocking on the door. They've got the ball inside the five-yard line. It'll be second and four. So I guess they're going to put it on the four. Doug Roberts is coming into the ball game now at the offensive uh, line. They're bringing uh, Terry Martin out, the wide receiver. So it must be some kind of a goal line offense that they've got now for Coach Knight. They'll have a double tight end. The tight ends being Chris Norman and Stacy Young. And Roberts is the tackle on the right side. Split match, second goal from the four. And the ball goes inside and a touchdown for the central. Kurt Johnson, I believe, on the carry. Yes, it was, Joe, and they had actually almost an unbalanced line on the one side. They, they added Doug Roberts to that side, put the tight end out a little bit farther, and then gave it to Kurt Johnson along that way, but Kurt made a lot of those yards right on his own, too. Portage Central up on top now, 13 to nothing. Kurt Johnson getting the touchdown on a four-yard run. And Jeff Vine will be in to attempt the extra point. The snap, the set, the kick is blocked. A poor kick by the Mustangs, and our score will remain 13 to nothing. The Mustangs have, Joey, just a, a whole crop of packs. I think they can run them in and run them out all night long, and maybe after last week in the mud and, and just running maybe basically with the two backs that uh, Coach Knight decided to uh, use fresh people all of the time. He's got some other people that can run the ball very, very well and haven't even been in there yet. Mike Garrity is one that he's been high on all year, and uh, I'm sure that he's going to see some action tonight. Well, Marty Williams, the big fullback, hasn't seen any action either, and I'm sure we'll see him. 
Right now, Johnson, the workhorse, unofficially 35 yards and a touchdown on six carries.